Hi everyone, welcome you all to this online class of science with me. My name is Abhishek Majumdar and you all are watching my channel with Ganam. I hope you all are doing very well in this on a uh, hard time of coronavirus and are completely following the lockdown period uh, issued by the government. Today we are uh, going to complete another new chapter of class 8 science NCRT. It is going to be the first part of chapter microorganism friend and foe. First of all, we will complete these terms or this topic like the what are microorganisms, where do the microorganisms live and microorganisms and us. In this microorganism and us, we will complete some of the subtopic like friendly microorganisms, making of curd and bread, commercial use of the microorganisms, medicinal use of the microorganisms, vaccine, increasing soil fertility and changing the environment with the help of microorganisms. So let's start the chapter. So what actually a microorganism is? As we all are uh, 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 we all are familiar with the term the plant and animal as a microorganisms, right? But we have already read about the vermicomposting and the conversion of the waste into the organic into uh, organic matter into humus, right? So we might have familiar with the term the microorganisms. So what actually are microorganisms are the uh, those organisms other than the plant and animal which cannot be seen through naked eye. They are known as what microorganisms or say microbes. They can only be seen with the help of some tools like magnifying glasses as well as the microscope. And here we have a, uh, another picture. You might be familiar with this picture, this kind of picture, because fungus has grown over this bread and have spoiled it. So fungus is what fungus is another type of microorganism. So how many types of microorganisms are there? There are mainly four types of microorganisms that is bacteria, protozoa, fungi and algae. And virus is another microorganism which comes under the sub microorganism particle. We will d discuss about the, vi about the virus later. So first of all, let's see some of the example of the bacteria such as lactobacillus which are present in the milk and acidophilus bacteria which helps uh, us to uh, which helps us in the, the digestion of the food some examples of the protozoa are amoeba paramecia bread mold and penicillin are the examples of fungi and spirogyra and cyanobacteria will uh, are the example of some algae right so come to the another part that what bacteria is bacteria are microscopic single celled organism remember bacteria are always a single celled organism here we have some of the shapes of the bacteria they can be of different shapes like cocos cocobacillus vibro uh, bacillus etc and some of the examples are the different pictures of the bacteria we have and the dead is a a very complex relations of the bacteria with human being because they are of different kinds they are of helpful and they are might be of harmful in nature to uh to us uh, means to us to the human beings as well as to other animals and always remember that is a study of the bacteria is known as bacteriology which we study under the branch microbiology isn't it and how does the bacteria helps so here some of the examples like the bacteria helps in making the milk into curd as well as it helps in our digestion now come to the another slide that what are the fungi and algae as fungi and algae are what algae are the autotrophs that is they can make their own food whereas fungi are dependent over other that is they comes under heterotrophs here we have some of the pictures of the fungi and algae uh, some chlamydomonas volvox uh, uh, althrix examples these are the examples of what algae and penicillium are some examples of fungi right and study of fungi is known as what mycology and study of algae is known as phycology or algology remember this now come to the term protozoa so what the protozoa is protozoa are remember the protozoa are single celled organism here we can see that protozoa are the single celled org organism and they can live on any environment they can uh, ranging uh, of different size we can see different size of the protozoa right and they can change their shape from amoeba to paramecium also as paramecium is a complex uh, structure complex shape and amoeba is a very simple structure of the protozoa so they can convert their shape that's why uh, they can live inside uh, anywhere they can live in any environment so Come to the term virus. So what the virus is, virus are the microscopic, uh, say sub-microscopic uh, organism which 
live inside the host they always remember uh, always remember this point that virus always need or they reproduce only inside the cell of the host organism maybe a plant animal or even the bacteria some common ailments like the cold flu or may cough caused by bacteria isn't it here we have some of the pictures of the bacteria like influenza bacteriophage ebola virus these all are caused by the bacteria and these are the some uh, some shapes of the bacteria and recently we all are um, familiar with the term coronavirus as it has become a pandemic to us to this whole world um, and here we have the term sars covid 2 which is the severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2 and who has de designated this coronavirus as a pandemic and as a public health emergency international concern so it is a shape of the coronavirus and it only live inside the host like we human being or other animals that's why do not get in contact with other human beings frequently until and unless there is a need so do, do not go out and completely follow this lockdown period now come to the another term where does the microorganism live so microorganisms are the what single celled like bacteria some algae protozoa etc and they might be of multicellular like algae and fungi and they live in every environment here we have the picture that microorganisms are living at every environment they may live in the ice cold condition they may live inside the water they will live inside soil as well as in hot condition like the volcanoes or in hot desert conditions they can live from the desert to marshy land or oh, means microorganisms can live anywhere they can also live in inside the human body as well as in animal body here we have another picture of a microorganisms which is known as a water bears or say tardigrade so last year what had happened that a uh, israeli spacecraft crashed while landing on moon and they were uh, they uh, were uh, landing on the moon with uh, along with the tardigrades and because of the crash the uh, the tardigrades has spread over the surface of the moon and as tardigrades are those organisms which may live in the extreme condition that's why they are known as extremophiles so might be uh, when we are looking at the moon nowadays might be the tardigrades which are living in the moon now they are looking back to us right so now come to the term microorganism and us so microorganism plays an important role in our daily life and some of those important or useful um uh, example of the microorganisms are that microorganisms uh, uses for various purpose like they are used for the preparation of the bread and uh, bread cake curds etc they are using for the preparation of the alcohol since ages they are used in cleaning up the environment by breaking down the organic waste into humus and preparation of the manure as well as cleaning them and they are helpful in the nitrogen fixation also the cyanobacteria are there which is known as the nitrogen fixer bacteria as well as they are used for the preparation of the medicine isn't it let's have an elaborate look over these so how does the uh, bacteria are helpful for the preparation of the curd and bread so the that particular process is known as what fermentation here we have a picture of the louis pasteur who discovered the fermentation in the year 1857 so what actually uh, a fermentation is or how does the milk get converted into curd that milk have globular pro uh, protein which is known as what casein right and the curd which are formed by the chemical reaction between the lactic acid or say lactobacillus bacteria and casein casein is a protein which uh, uh, which used to be there inside the milk right and during fermentation fermentation is a chemical process that is conversion of um, curd with the help of some bacteria right and some bacteria uses the enzyme to produce what to produce some energy which is, which is known as adenosine triphosphate uh, that is atp from lactose that's how the bacteria uh convert the milk into the curd here we have the picture of conversion of the milk into curd right and here we have another picture of uh, conversion of uh wheat dough uh into cake 
so how does the cake or pastries be prepared with the help of the ferment uh, fermentation actually for the preparation of this cakes or pastries we use what yeast and yeast are fun um, uh, and those fungi which we uh, uses uh, in the preparation of these as they reproduce very rapidly and they pro uh, they produce a carbon dioxide while their respiration and that gas actually release the wheat dough and increase the volume and that's how the cake has been prepared also fermentation actually when louis pasteur did discover the fermentation he actually found that yeast are converting the sugar into alcohol or wine right so when the yeast are converting the sugar into alcohol uh, that particular process is known as what fermentation okay now come to the um, medicinal use of the microorganisms so when we fall ill might be we go to the doctor and obviously we go to the doctor so when we go to doctor it may uh, means they may give us some antibiotic tablets so you might have heard about some of the antibiotic tablets like penicillin streptomycin erythromycin tetracycline etc so which are used as an antibiotic so what are antibiotics so antibiotics are actually those microorganisms which are injected in our body which uh, or might be uh, with the help of some capsule or tablets which actually kill the invader which actually kill the other microorganisms the harmful microorganisms right here we have a picture of uh, dr alexander fleming in 1929 he uh, accidentally discovered the penicillin uh, what had happened there actually one day he was working on his project of some culture of the bacteria and he found that a green mold like penicillium grows over the his culture plate and it killed so many of bacteria from there he found that some fungi like penicillium that can kill the bacteria so one bacteria may kill the another bacteria or one fungi or one microorganism may kill the another microorganism and that's how the uh the first preparation of the penicillin that is the antibiotic as an antibiotic and nowadays we prepare this antibiotic in a commercial matter in a commercial way in a large amount right but always remember that do not consume unnecessarily or unessentially any antibiotic because it may kill some of the beneficial bacteria which is present in our in our body for other works in our body and might not it work properly when we take or when we need those microorganisms or those antibiotic in future right and nowadays what happen antibiotics are also used on the poultry farms uh, to and other livestock to check the microbial infection in them isn't it so always remember that we must take the antibiotic on the advice of the qualified doctor here we have some of the pictures of the antibiotic now come to the another uh, part that is vaccine so what vaccine is vaccine is a biological preparation that provides what active acquired immunity to a particular infectious disease nowadays we need a vaccine to um to um uh, uh, nowadays what we need a vaccine for what for the covid-19 right because covid-19 has become a pandemic so obviously we need to increase our immunity in our body and that's why we need what vaccine here we have a picture of edward jenner who first prepared the vaccine of the smallpox in 1798 some of the pictures of the vaccine of polio or cholera vaccine is there so, so when diseases carrying microbes enter in our body what happened they i mean our body produce some antibodies right and those antibodies used to fight with those microbes which are the invaders in our body and that's how a vaccine work so you might have uh, remembered that in your childhood um, we used to go to the doctor and a doctor gave us some of the vaccine right when we were very small or as children doctor used to give us what vaccine so those vaccine used to be inside our body throughout our life process and they remain inside our body and protect us from the disease causing the microbes forever 
Several diseases like the cholera, tuberculosis, smallpox, hepatitis, these may be prevented or these all are prevented by what vaccination, right? Now, come to another part that is the increasing soil fertility and clearing the environment with the help of the bacteria. Here we have the bacteria that is cyanobacteria which is also known as nitrogen fixing bacteria. You have already familiar with the term that is nitrogen fixing bacteria are present inside the soil and they used to convert what atmospheric nitrogen into the nitrogenous compound and that's how they increase the fertility of the soil and that's why there are some biological nitrogen fixer. Right? Uh, some example is the cyanobacteria and another Bacteria is used to convert the dead and decaying matter. They used to decompose the dead organic matters like dead plants or animals and convert them into simpler substances. And convert what? Humus. And those humus again used up by the plants for the growth. So that's how my, those microorganisms also helps us in clearing the environment. So here our first chapter end. So now here we have some of the practice question that is uh, I hope that you all will complete this practice question very sincerely and I hope that you all will be able to give answer to th this the practice question. Thank you all. God bless you all. I hope you all are doing very well in this hard time of coronavirus. Thank you all and God bless you all.